Okay. Uh, 65 starts off with the bottoms look like they almost are the same. But they ain't. That sucks. Hey, no such word as ain't, Jeff. Five over n plus one. N over n plus one. Yeah. Freak yeah. So there's a few people in here that still, no matter how much I say, will cancel those ends. I'm not sure what to do for you anymore now. Right. I mean, that's like saying four fifths can reduce. Can four fifths reduce? Shit, no. Even though it's four over four plus one, I don't care. Division requires multiplication to be the way that broke it up to kill something. I can't kill. I can't reduce this, so you can't reduce that. Sure, stop it. So uh, do, what do I need then to do this? I multiply each side by the n plus one and minus one. So what's he need? N plus one. He needs an n plus one. So you give him an n plus one. What's he need? And minus one. Cool, I like it. Yeah, and then you multiply through, is that cool? Right. Five n plus five plus n squared minus n. There's no minus that messes up in the middle, that's nice. All over. So what do you have to do on the top? Combine like terms. terms and then check to see yeah, if it'll factor so you can see if it'll cancel any. So you get n squared minus plus 4n plus, four four n. N plus 5. Any factors of positive 5 that add to be positive 4? No. Hell no. 5 and 1 makes 6. Negative 5 and negative 1 make negative 6. Your brain kind of says, well, five and four work to you. No, they don't. They don't. If that was a four and that was a five, it would work. Because four and one multiply by four and add to be five. But they're just the wrong place. So no, the top is prime. So it can't reduce. Is that cool? Yeah, so that's a, a little bit evil there. Those numbers look like they want to work, but they're just in the wrong place. It doesn't work. It's prime. So you stop there. Yeah, I like it. Kick ass. But you do have to check. Yeah. If you don't check, you'll get lucky sometimes, maybe. Yes? 7 plus 5 uh, on my lab, it's 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3. Oh, and, oh, you got it from online, okay. Yes. 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3 divided by 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's break out this guy. Okay. If I look this way, I feel like I'm alone. Oh. Um, notice, I mean, it's really nice that they repeat, but it's not so nice you can just kill, kill, get weirdness, ones left over. It's weird. That doesn't work that way because you got these plus and this minus in the way. But, I mean, uh, the LCD for the top stuff and the bottom are the same. So it's really kind of nifty. Uh, so you can do it whatever way you want to, but hopefully you guys realize, I mean, what's this guy need? X plus three. X plus three. Ooh, you're a nice one. Let's keep you. Get over there. Oh, shit. Uh, and then this guy needs... Plus two, and the same thing on the bottom, right? Just a minus, it's the only reason it doesn't just cancel directly. They're almost the same. Do you guys see when I combine them, the bottoms are gonna be the same, the combined bottoms are gonna be the same, the bottoms all cancel, do you guys see that? Because then I'll be left with on the top, these cancel, so I'll be left with x plus three plus x plus two, these cancel. Why do they cancel? Why am I allowed to cancel in an equation? Because there's two sides. Why am I allowed to cancel here? Because there's two sides. Top side, bottom side. Right? It's only when there's not two sides that would balance each other out that you can't do shit like that. You can't kill things. Um, and here, again, those would cancel. Those cancel with each other. So I get x plus 3 minus, sure, as long as you do this, 
right, is minus this plot, or you distribute, right, you distribute that through, which I'm going to do now. So you have to either do it or write it so that you will do it. Right? So on the top, what do I get? I get 2x plus 5, and here I'm going to have minus x, so x minus x, 3 minus 2. Oh, that's crazy. That's really nice. All right? Why did I do the whole thing? I don't know. I can't stop this. I wanted to see how it came out. So that one, it was, it was the reason it, it looks easy, it is easy as long as you don't do more than you're allowed to do. I mean, the fact that they're all the same, sort of, and they have the same is, is nice. But it also leads to people just going, kill them all. One plus one over one minus one. That's undefined. Oh, shit. No, that's not what happens. You can't do that. If you make the top and bottom the same. So another way I could have done this, just in case. So uh, if, you, if you don't like this happening, oops, got it. I could do this over x plus 3, x plus 2, over x plus 3, minus x, minus 2, over, and then, and then I could multiply by the reciprocal, and you see if I flip this up here, won't this and this cancel? Guess, yeah, yeah, so it's, the math is the same, it doesn't look the same, but the math is the same, math doesn't care where it happens, it can happen here, or when you flip it, it's going to happen directly, it's going to happen. You just have to see how it makes sense. Not memorize how it's done. See why it makes sense. Yeah. Um, page 473, number 54. Oh, okay. I'll say this. On number 54 and 76, the answer you get no shouldn't work. Right. And there's some questions that kind of Yes, totally. What do we call it? Like, if, if the equation starts with this kind of thing, uh, blah, 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 and you do all the work and you get x equals negative 2. Yeah, why would there be no solution? Because what does this do to it? Makes it a zero. So it makes the original thing undefined. Okay. I don't know how far it's going to be able to go back. Uh, makes the original undefined. So the only possible answer doesn't work. You've got to take a second and check to see if that happens. So it's no solution. You don't have to know this, but you might hear this in the future. This is called an extraneous solution, an extra solution, if you want to think of it that way. Extraneous. Right? Something I picked up that I didn't really need that doesn't really work. It's extraneous. Kind of freaky. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, we, we just we just did that. Okay. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that was the one where you could combine the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then combine the top, right? Uh, So on the bottom, you get 2 over x plus 1, right? Because you can combine them. Uh, what are you, wait. One, 2 over x minus 1, right? And on the top, you just have to get, what was it, 4x squared and x cubed? Other way around. Yeah, yeah other way around. All right, let me, let me do... If you can make the top a single fraction, then you can multiply by this guy's reciprocal, right? Okay, so how do I make the top a single fraction? What does this guy need that this guy has? Multiply by x. Yeah, multiply by x. And this guy needs a... What is that? Four. Four. And then you can combine those, and then you just multiply by the reciprocal. That's how you divide fractions. So that is one way you can attack all of these, is you make the top a single fraction, you make the bottom a single fraction, and then you multiply by the reciprocal. I'm not supposed to multiply by the execution. Now, are there other ways to do this? Yes, there are other ways to do this. Um, 
This problem, actually, I would just do it the way I said, because it's just got one fraction on the bottom already. You know what I mean? But technically, you could. Uh, could multiply the top by 4x cubed times x minus 1 and multiply the bottom by the same thing. I mean, the one way to do this is to figure out what the LCD is for all of fractions and then multiply top and bottom by that. That is a valid method. It's not a valid, it's not a method I kind of teach in the first place. Uh, but if you like that way, you can do it that way. Yeah. There are reasons that I pick certain ways to do things, but there's a lot more ways to do things than I show you. If I showed you every way, that would be so freaking confusing. But if you have a way you think works, you can just show it to me and I can tell you if it works. That's the, that's the thing about teaching math is if I show too many ways, people mix them up and get all freaky answers. If I don't show enough ways, I don't show somebody a way that they know even better that makes sense to them, then they feel like math doesn't make any sense. And, oh, shit. So it's a balance I'm always trying to get. Cool. Okay. Yes? Can you repeat section 7.6? What was the first one you hit that you couldn't do? 9 over y minus 1. Wait, right, so 9 over y minus 1. Plus 1 over y equals 11, 10. 11 over 10? Yes. Okay, cool. So, the way I try to teach this to you is the way that, may, that more follows what we do before this section. That's why I try to teach it that way, because it's already a method you know, which is just to make all the bottoms the same. the same by giving them what they're missing. So what's this first guy missing relative to the other two? He's missing a 10 and a Y. Do you guys see that? Sometimes I'll say this to somebody and say, in this first fraction, there is no Y. And somebody will be like, Jeff, you forgot one of your meds this morning or something. There's a Y. No, there's no Y there. It's the same way, if I said there's no 7 in there, would you guys, is there a 7 in here? No, there's no freaking 7 in there. Well, wait, 9 is 7 plus 2, and you're like, I don't give a shit. So there's no Y. There's no Y. There's a Y minus 1. There ain't no Y. You guys see what I mean? If you see what I mean by that, a lot of this will make more sense. Y minus 1 is its own number. It's not Y, right? You wouldn't say 4 depends on 5 because 4 is 5 minus 1. That's bullshit. 4 is its own number. 5 is its own number. Right? So then it makes a little more sense that he is missing a Y. He is. He doesn't have a Y yet. He's got a Y minus 1. And of course, there are, these both are missing a 10. So I want to give him a 10 that they're missing and a Y. So what's he missing? Obviously, he has a 10 one. and a Y minus 1. And of course, he's missing all the Y stuff. Now, they all have 10 Y, Y minus 1 on the bottom, right? So what am I allowed to do now, which is really nice? Yeah, multiply both sides by that bottom. I've made them all have the same bottom. I can kill that in one fell swoop. Right? You ever heard that phrase, one fell swoop? Yes. All right, it's still alive. So I gnarly. 10 y, one minus one, bam, 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 die. Right? So what am I left with? 90 y. 10y minus 10. 11y minus squared. 11 y squared minus 11y. And what part of this tells you how to do the next step? See, what I tell people often is I'll tell them, cover this shit with a sheet. Because it doesn't matter a damn piece right now. It doesn't matter what this looked like to begin with. It only matters what's facing you right now. For some reason, I think this gets in the way, and you're like, well, is this kind of problem? Why would I do that? Well, who cares what it was? What matters is what it is. What tells me what to do? Y squared. Yeah, that Y squared term tells me I have to get it equal to zero. zero. Right. It doesn't matter how it started. All that matters is where you are right now. So I would move this stuff this way so that my Y squared term stays positive. Because some of you guys should have picked up by now that if the squared term is negative, it freaks things out a little bit. you got to be careful with that negative, so don't even let it show up. Get it equal to zero, factor it, bam. Okay. Is that cool? Yes. Okay. Do my touchy. Okay. All right. Anything else from homework? Some good stuff. Good questions.
Okay, okay. All right. Um, so believe it or not, last time we made it through 8-2. So let's remember what the hell we did, especially if you don't believe me. Um, 8 2 is all about linear functions. So they're combining functional stuff, f of x stuff, with lines. Both things we know. We did last time the only kind of new thing, which is an old thing, but you just didn't see it this way. Uh, who remembers? If they give you. Let me give it to you this way. Let me tell you this is a linear function. And let me tell you. This is 1, this is negative 5, this is 3, uh, this is uh, 1. Don't say anything out loud. Don't say anything out loud. Figure out what those two are. I love it. I had a class last semester. I'd say that. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Do this, and this old dude over there will be like, seven, no, 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 I just, no. So then I had to look at him when I said, don't say anything. So the fact that it's a linear function, that, that's the only way I could possibly ask you to fill this in. For some other kind of function, I have to give you more information. For a line, I just need two points to see the pattern. And what pattern am I looking for right now to help me with this? The slope, the slope. Yeah, the slope. So as my y's go, which way by what amount? Positive six. Yeah, they go up by six. My x's go positive two. up by two. So there's a few different answers I can take here. The most direct answer is to add another two. Five. So that would be five, and then I have to add another. That would be seven, right? You could also give me, if that go up by two is up by six, then up by one would be up by three. three. I like it. You had to kind of watch as I did that. If you're just listening, it didn't make any sense. Up by 2 on the x is up by 6 on the y. It means up by 1 on the x would be up by 3 on the y, right? So you could have also put in there uh, 4 and 4, right? I think, yes. Up by 3, up by, uh, I'm sorry, up by 1, up by 3. Let me make sure you guys If I have a slope of what, what's the slope of this line? What's the slope of this line? No. Yeah, rise over run. Rise over one, x's. Or I like to say rise over more y's over the other guys. Make it like rhyme. So that's the slope of 3 to 1. There you go. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it goes, uh, the y's go up by 6 as the x's go up by 2 means the y's go up by 3 as the x's go up by 1. They, they're there. That's all it's saying. I'm just seeing it in a slightly different way than I'm used to. In this box way. Okay. Let me let that sink in. So it's not a difficult concept. It's just we haven't seen slope represented in this way truly yet. Okay, maybe. So if I ask you is this, does this represent a linear function? Uh, you can do it, Jeff. So as the x is changed by 6, the y's are supposed to go down by 2, right? So the x's did change by 6. Did the y's go down by 2? No. no. What should be there? Zero. Zero. I like it. So the way it's given, it's not linear. It doesn't. It just kind of does a turn <laughs> that way or that way. So the minute the slope is not the same, it's not a line anymore. So if he's asking me, is it linear, and its slope doesn't stay the same, then it's not a line. It's not linear. It can't be. Well, this one would be a little bit weird. It might be a parabola. See, this I need more information then. Because the fact that the slope doesn't stay the same might mean it's a parabola, but then could I do this? Whoops. <laughs> do, do, do you see what I mean? So I don't have enough information for that. All I know, all I have enough information for is it's not linear. What is it? 
I have no idea. Because how many other things could it be? A lot. If you know it's a line, if it's supposed to be linear, totally, all day long. Right. Yep. So, all right. So if I knew this is linear, since you since you asked, if I knew this was linear, so it's got to be in this form, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Yes, I love it. So, what two things do you know? You know two things, which is why you think maybe you can use a system of equations because. What two things do you not know that you need to know for a line, M and B? But I do have two pieces of information, right? I have when x is 1, y is 4. So y is 4 when x is 1. I also have when uh, y is 2 when x is 7. So hell yeah, you could do substitution, you could do elimination, whatever you want to. That, this M and B are my unknowns. Now, what, do you have to do it this way? Oh, hell no. You can find the slope. You can do Y minus 1, 1 equals M times X minus X1 and plug one of the points in. Yeah, I can find the slope, right? Yeah, that's the standard way that we show to do it. But of course you could do a system of equations. I love it. There's two things I need to know, and there's two things I've been told. That's what a system of equations does. Two unknowns needs two pieces of information. Three unknowns need three. Oh, shit. And that's when we start using matrices and shit that's coming up in our future. Yeah, as little as you want it to happen, it's going to happen anyway. Aw. I mean, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> I love where you're going with this, but these are kind of questions I would ask for bonus. But real quick, just because you asked. Uh, let me see if you guys can pick up on this. So this is A and this is B. I'd have to do something like this to make this kind of doable. This would be A minus 2 and this is B plus 1. So let me see if you guys can see this. How much did the X change? Negative 2. It went down by 2. And this went up by one. So to get the next point, I just have to go down another two. So this has to go up another one. I mean, so that is one way you could do it. And it really, to me, is just sort of a way of tripping people up a little bit because they think the A and B are going to do a lot. What's the only thing I care about to figure out the next thing is how much these changed by. I don't care that that's a one and that's a seven. All I care about is that they're separated by six. So that's the point this kind of problem would make. I don't care if this is A and B. I just care about how much they changed to figure out the next one, right? That's the point this kind of problem would be trying to make. <clears throat> I love the question, though. It's awesome. That's the kind of bonus question I would use. I have to come up with something different now. All right. Anything else from anything? How will you do to determine whether f is a linear function? Where are we at, sir? Oh, uh, from like MATLAB. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, oh, we'll all right, gotcha. A linear function, notice every single line, we, do you agree with this? Every single line has to be able to be put in this form. Is that true? Of course it is. Of course it is. If I have this, can I put that in that form? Yes. Really? Is there anything in this form that has a place for x squared terms? No. Of course not. So in fact, you guys know on another level, x squared is going to look like what? No, no, no. Graphically, what would it look like? You guys should... Some of you should know. Square to be prime, right? All right? Do we do we not know this yet? Maybe you don't know this yet. I thought for sure you would have talked about this by night. But any x squared term is going to look like a parabola. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be a straight line. When you square things, do things watch this. When I square things, watch what happens. So one squared is one. Two squared is four. If it's linear, 
When this goes up by one, this better go up by three. Now we know that ain't gonna happen, right? What's three squared? Did it go up by three? It's gonna go up by more and more and more and more, and that's what it curves. It looks like it's, so that's why it curves. It looks like it's gonna have a smaller slope, but every time I take a step, the slope gets bigger and bigger. It went up by three as this went up by one. It went up by five as this went up by one. See how the slope is getting bigger? It's getting bigger and bigger. The slope is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you take that turn, right? You may. So when they ask you, if they give you an equation and they say, is this a linear function or is this a linear equation? You just look at the, the, the variable co uh, powers. To be linear, any variable in the equation has to have a power of one. Period. So if something had a one half power, no. Something had a, a third power, no. Right? Maybe. So uh, is this linear? Just linear. Yep. Yes, you have to actually simplify it at all to see that. Obviously, somebody doesn't, right? How can I know immediately this is linear? Because every variable I see, every single one of them has first power. There's no squares, there's no cubes, there's no fractional powers, there's no freaky ass powers. They're all a power of one. I could simplify it, I could put it in this form. Why can I put it in this form? Every y has a first power, every x has a first power. That's, that's why. I like it. Right? So then Lynn and I do something like, uh, uh, doesn't even matter now. I think you guys got the idea. I mean, the minute I write something, you're going to be like, no. I mean, that's, is that linear? Why? There's a third power. In fact, this is going to look something like, we are. Some of you guys might know that. Some of you guys, it looks like a parabola that kind of half of it fell out. I call it cubics. One of my colleagues calls this a giraffe graph because if there was a leg here and I'm like, well, that's horrible, man. Like the front leg, somebody cut it off or some shit. I always give him some shit about that. And the giraffe's kind of like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's so horrible. But it, will. it works, whatever. Giraffe graph. All right. Sorry, Corey, if you watch this. Keep doing your giraffe thing. It's fine. All right, how do you feel about that? Is that cool? So they can ask you, that is really, in fact, it goes through all of math. Is this a linear function? Yes. It's a linear function. It's a different kind of, it doesn't make a straight line necessarily, but it is linear in the sense that they're all to the first power. Does it make a straight line? No, it makes more than that. In fact, we're soon going to get into this. This would make a plane, but it's like a flat plane. It's like a, a line that's extended to the next dimension. It's flat, that's the key. So would you say that a parabola is flat? No, but would you say a line is flat? You know, if, you know what I mean, it doesn't change. It's always, it says flat. And a plane is flat, right? Do you guys understand? So the idea of flatness is really what the term linear relates to. Did I go further than we need at the moment? Yeah, I did. This is going to be in chapter 9, though, so hey, it's coming up. Okay, okay. Man, all right. It's not too hard to get me to go off on some neat tangent, and you're all out there saying, are we going to be tested on this shit? But what, yes, yeah, so on this one, just how do you tell what's linear? You just look at the powers. Do they, are they first power? That's what's required. Uh, anything else before we get, there's one more thing I want to remind you guys about, and that's, how to find the midpoint. Who remembers how to find a midpoint between two points? It's insane. Yeah, midpoint formula, I love it. But instead of memorizing a formula, what's the idea? The midpoint should be the point that's made up of the x and y, where the x is the average of the x's. So really, the midpoint is the average of the two parts, right? So what's the midpoint of four, negative two, and uh, 10, uh, 6. All right, how would we do that? Well, how would I average the x's? Yeah, some of you guys can just see 7 is right in the middle, or you add them up, divide by 2, and you get 7. 4 plus 10 divided by 2, 
Same thing here. Negative 2 plus 6 divided by 2. So I get 7 and 2. See how 2 is 4 away from this and it's 4 away from this. So it's the midpoint. So all the midpoint is, average the two parts. Right? Average x, comma, average y. you got to love that shit. That's what the midpoint should be, is the middle point. Oh, that's awesome it is. How do we feel about that? I reminded myself last time not to try to read you at all. Are those both or by two? Yes, okay. all day long. How do I average anything? Oh, and there's always only going to be two of them. So I always add them up and divide by how many there are. And I'm just going to have two x's, two y's. So if you think about it, you can extend this to higher dimensions. I'm not going to do it, even though you asked the question, right? But you can, you can ask, if you have two planes that are parallel to each other, what's the mid-plane? We're not going to go there at all. But sure, you can step up every problem we do into the next dimension up. Fine. We won't do that. We'll go to third dimension in chapter nine, but we won't go to fourth or fifth or sixth or eighteenth dimension or anything like that in this class. Okay. You're all like, well, good. <laughs> uh, anybody ever listen to Pandora, by the way, real quick? Anybody ever even know about Pandora? Do you know what Pandora is? Do you know what Spotify is? Okay. Pandora is the music thing that researchers who like music created, and it uses, like jazz, anybody like any jazz at all? Anybody like old Snoopy stuff with the jazz, right? A little bit? No? Okay. Uh, jazz has like 500 components that if you like a certain jazz song, it kind of measures the components and then sees what the next song that's close to that is. So it's like, X and Y are two components. X, Y, Z are three. Jazz has 500 components. So it's like the 500 dimension thing. Yeah. Blew your mind. All right. Let me stop that. I'm sorry. I'll bring it back in. Um, okay. So we're going to get into 8.3. All right. Now that I've got a few more people here, anybody else not get the practice test? I mean, else need to practice test that we got that. I'll have the answer key for that tomorrow. Um, so section A3 is called compound inequalities. And it's compound inequalities because it's more than one inequality at a time. But it's connected by some word. So it's x plus 3. Let's just do this. Let's just start off with something we already solved x greater than 4 and x less than uh, 10. Now, this one's kind of silly. Hopefully, you guys, this is a good one to start with. So that, that means that the answers to this question have to be both bigger than 4 and less than 10. Can you just, without saying anything, guess, kind of draw what that would look like? So, let's see, what would it look like? Here's 4, here's 10. Yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be, so you could do this if you needed to, especially when the problems get a little more complex. You could say it's got to be bigger than 4, right? Right? And it's got to be less than 10. So where do those two agree? It's got to be both. So it can't be anything out here because they don't both work there. So the and means they have to both work. So obviously then it would be from here to there. That's where they both work. I like it. I like it. And most often relates, uh, comes into a sandwich. What do I mean by sandwich? Bread, bread, jelly in the middle, right? Jelly in the middle? <laughs> I don't know. I almost don't care if you don't like that. Just, that's the way I look at it. And makes a sandwich. Now watch, here's or. Let's see what the hell or does. And is the mean bouncer. You have to do both. To get in the club, you got to be this and this. So only these people get in the club. Right, and Jeff is here. He's like, ah, screw you guys. 
what the hell does more do then? Let's see. How about x uh, less than or equal to negative 5 or x greater than 2? Sure, but and, and facing which way? So it's got to be it's got to be this, or it could be this. Doesn't have to be both. It doesn't. It, it could be that or that. So that's the answer. Then that's right. So that that's just the answer. I, I, and is going to be the overlap. It's got to be both of them. Or is it could be any anywhere that at least one of them is is it. That's what or is. Or is the nice bouncer. You could be this, or you could be this. You know, of course, Jeff, of course, would be in here. Ah, oh, damn. I tried. Yeah. It's like called again, or it's like negative infinity to a number. Is that called interval notation? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how would I write this in interval notation? This one's the easy one, hopefully. I mean, it really looks just like it looks in the graph. From four. four up to ten, and you use the same symbols from the graph. That's crazy. Well, the one slightly bad thing about the way they chose to do this is that it looks like a point. So you have to pay attention to context. Right? It's not a point. That is an interval from four to ten. How do you do this one? Oh, shit. Yeah. So this starts off at negative infinity. You never put a bracket on an infinity, because that's telling me you can get to infinity and pick it up. Okay, you gotta let me know. If you can, I don't know what happens when you do that. You become pure energy, I think. That's how you go in and you're just going. Uh, up to negative five. And who remembers what goes in the middle? A U. And in fact, that U is the math way to say this. In fact, if I did this, I'm like, you or you, somebody. You or you, Somebody, look, you, right? No, you, shit, no, not at all? Okay. Uh, the symbol for and, it doesn't show up as much, but it's uh, it's kind of nice. It looks like an A without a bracket in the middle. It's an upside down U. That's the symbol for and. Or is your U, I don't care. And looks like an A without a bar in the middle. Okay, if anybody's ever done logic, they actually use a V for or and a upside down V for and, uh, for and, yeah, okay. If you haven't done logic, that's okay. Uh, and so then it would be union, that's the word for this, by the way, union, and the word for this is intersection. Can you see why it makes sense? Intersect, where do these two intersect? Here. Union, combine these two, this or this, right? Or two to infinity, bam. All right, let me stop there for a second. Let me see if you guys see what I mean. This whole little thing right here, this whole little piece, I see as saying skip. From negative infinity to infinity, skip between those two. Sure enough, we skipped this whole part, right? That's not part of the answer. A lot of kids. A lot of kids. Oh, it'd just be graph this? Oh, just a graph yeah. Now, of course, you know, it's not going to start off like it's going to be solve this in graph, and they got to have an equation here, an inequality, and an inequality there, and you solve, and then you end up here. And that's how you would graph it, interval notation it. So let's do a whole problem from the beginning. Let me take one right out of the book. Blah, 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 blah. Sure enough. Okay, let's see that one. That looks gross. I like you, go away. Funny how the cheaper thing works better. Boy, that was always true. All right. Oh, my God. Let's see. No, that makes sense. Grid one. Or x plus 3, n equal to negative 1. Ooh, I like this one. This is neat. So what do you think you have to do first? 
Yes, yeah, so all both, right? So I, I, the example I gave you was just to make sure you understood what and and or meant. Now they're going to start you off with a little bit of simplifying. Who cares? A little solving. How you solve this? Subtract five. Sure. Subtract five. Is that the thing that's out of place? Divide by negative one. Switch to seven. Yep. Or, and then this guy, you just have to subtract three. So now watch. It's basically, you can think of it, you can do it like the and thing. X has to be less than four. So it has to be less than four. Or it can be greater than or equal to negative four. Now, if it said and, the answer would be Negative four bracket up to four parentheses. You guys see that. If it was and, it has to be a sandwich. It has to be where they both agree, where they intersect. Or it just says at least one of them has to have that as an answer. So can you tell me, here's a good way to look at or sometimes. What is left out? Is anything left out? Is anything not covered? It be all real numbers. Yes, all real numbers. Do you guys see that? So or is one of them or the other one has to include it for it to be included in the answer. And is it's only included if they both include it. That's why it's an intersection. So if this would have said and, this would have been the answer. But it's or. So these are the answers or these. Oh, all right. That covers everything. That covers everybody. It's sort of like saying, oh, you have to be older than 10 or younger than 12. So, <coughs> So everybody then, what the hell is your problem, right? Who is not older than 10 or younger than 12? Please tell me who this person is. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Do you, does that make sense? Now, if somebody said you have to be older than 10 and less than 12, well, then you're freaking talking about you have to be from 10 to 12, right? So and is very restrictive. It says you have to match both things. Or is I include anybody that's anywhere that either thing says. And nobody's left out here. All rules. How do you write that as uh, interval notation? From all the way up to infinity. There's no you. There's no skip. I'm not going to skip anybody. Okay. And they never do a bracket when you write that, right? Totally. Right. Again, because if you put a bracket on infinity, it's, it's sort of like the people that do this. That freaks me out because then I'm like, <laughs> I, I put it on the paper. What's that? Okay. Alright, bye. Alright. Uh, let's see if they get freaky at all. I mean that's that's basically uh, it. Um da -da -da. So here you guys try this one. Oh shoot. I don't like this thing. Thank you.